In 1971 Gakara Wawanja wrote a whole booklet called Agwati Wamuthangu Muiru, which means the danger of the black European. This book was dedicated to English interferences in Gikuyu. He published a revised edition in 1978 and, since then, he has reprinted it several times, thus showing that he still considered it relevant to our present situation. The main points raised by Gakara in his booklet are the psychological problems created for colonized people by the imposition of a foreign language, the danger of an eventual disappearance of Gikuyu vis-a-vis -vis the dominant English language and the widespread use of English words in conversations in Gikuyu, that is to say Gikuyu slash English code switching. The aim of Agwati Wamuthangu Muiru meaning the danger of the black European is in Gakara's words. To advise those Gikuyu who do not know that they are black Europeans because they have contracted the disease of speaking English when it is unnecessary. That is to say, when they talk to other Gikuyu. According to Gakara, the preference for English shown by some Gikuyu is the effect of a psychological problem or, in his own words, a self-created disease caused by colonialism. In order to render his point intelligible to his readers Gakara adopts the image of the colonialist's rooster, which the colonialist left behind on leaving Kenya at independence so that it would grow in the brains of the Gikuyu and force them to speak English even when they talk to other Gikuyu. Gakara writes that Gikuyu society was enslaved by the colonialists and the Gikuyu came to believe that just as the colonialist was a great man, so was his language. Since English is the language of the colonialist, the language of slavery, on speaking it, the Gikuyu show that they are still in the chains of slavery and also make the colonialist feel proud of his unbroken power over them. Gakara goes on to explain that language should be considered the most treasured possession of those who speak it. People who are deprived of their own language become alienated from their customs and traditions and also from their traditional celebrations. In the end, they are even denied their national liberty and they lose political control to foreigners, all this as a result of using a foreign language. According to Gakara, colonialism had also disruptive effects on Gikuyu traditions and beliefs. The colonialists not only stultified the Gikuyu language but Gikuyu religion as well and the Gikuyu were deceived into believing that the colonialist religion was better than theirs. In his booklet Gakara does not question the Christian religion, towards which he has always had an ambivalent attitude, but the fact that it was imposed on the Gikuyu who had their own, equally important, traditional beliefs. The Gikuyu, he writes, were confused and abandoned their traditional beliefs for no reason. They abandoned their sacrifices under the fig tree, although nobody has ever been able to explain why praying under the fig tree is wrong, just as nobody can give a good reason why God would be more likely to answer prayers concluding with the colonialist word Amen, than prayers which end with Kuritukagwa, God, which means let it be so, or Theta Taivanai, which means mercy, entreat God, mercy. Similarly, Gakara argues. To have a Christian name does not guarantee any special closeness to God who will answer men's prayers, no matter whether they have a Christian or a Gikuyu name. Gakara's argument is that just as there is no reason to adopt a foreign language, there is no justification for embracing a foreign religion. If people do so, he writes. It means that they have the colonialist rooster in their brains which makes them prefer the colonialist language and religion to theirs. It was in colonial schools, Gakara explains, that The colonialist rooster was forced into the minds of the Gikuyu. The command of English was an important criterion for acceding to the post-primary level of learning and to any position of some responsibility, hence English became the language of the educated and important people. By learning English, Gakara maintains The Gikuyu thought that they would become more important just like the European. But it was only an illusion because their knowledge of English could not change the color of their skin, they forgot that they could never become white men, but only black Europeans, that is to say alienated people with no cultural identity. In the first decade of independence, Gakara writes, The situation was not different as Gikuyu children continued to be taught in English at primary school. 
The exclusive use of English in basic education caused alienation and estrangement and Gikuyu children became small black Europeans who were bound to forget their mother tongue after a few years. The author does not blame the government of independent Kenya for that, but... The colonialist who wanted the Gikuyu to live in his bag while he was claiming that they had got independence. It was only in 1970, Gakara explains that the black people of the education department rejected the colonialist plan because they could see that the colonialist was going to destroy the Gikuyu language completely. They ruled that Gikuyu children should start being taught to read and to write in their mother tongue and the Gikuyu should therefore thank the leaders of the education department of that time because, although the colonialists went on interfering with the Gikuyu language, they tried to stop the colonialist rooster from being forced into the minds of Gikuyu children, as was happening before. In independent Kenya, Gakara laments, some Gikuyu still suffer from a self-created disease or psychological problem, which leads them to speak English even to other Gikuyu. Again, uh, he does not blame the government of independent Kenya, or rather its policy towards vernacular languages, but the colonialist. He writes, Those people who are more used to speaking English than Gikuyu have become slaves of the colonialist rooster and that's why they speak English even when they are not supposed to do so. Gakara does not deny the importance of English, one of the most important languages in the world that puts Kenyans into contact with the outside world. But he condemns the practice of speaking English when it is unnecessary because If the Gikuyu go on talking in English to each other, in 100 years time all Gikuyu will be married to Englishmen. By saying talking in English, Gakara means both speaking English and using English words. Gakara dedicates a section of his booklet to the widespread use of English words in conversation in Gikuyu. People who mix languages, he maintains, suffer from a self-created disease or psychological problem, the disease of mixing languages. He explains that People who have got that disease, after a while, cannot help using some English words, even when they try to speak Gikuyu. He gives numerous examples of conversations which show Gikuyu slash English code switching, such as Gakara does not see rapid urbanization as one of the possible causes of intermixing, although he points out that in Gikuyu districts traditional greetings, for instance, still hold very firm. Neither does he consider as another possible cause the development of mass media exclusively in English and Kiswahili, although he blames those Gikuyu who only listen to English music on the radio. Gakara imputes the cause of the disease of mixing languages to the colonialist. The Gikuyu use English words while speaking Gikuyu because they have been enslaved by the colonialist rooster. It is the colonialist rooster which forces the Gikuyu to think that if they use English words, their Gikuyu will be better understood. But actually, they end up confusing their interlocutors, especially when there are people who do not understand English and so they cannot get the whole message. According to Gakara, very few people can speak a foreign language fluently and, unless they were brought up abroad, it is impossible for them to speak it as well as their mother tongue and without making any mistakes and, in spite of their efforts, the Gikuyu will never speak like the colonialist. The implication of Gakara's argument is that, since it is impossible for the Gikuyu to express themselves fully in English, it would be much better for them to speak in Gikuyu without wasting time in a hopeless pursuit. And yet, Gakara laments there are Gikuyu who are not interested in their own language. It is a shameful thing to hear people who are Gikuyu from head to toe say openly that they do not know Gikuyu and say it in Gikuyu. If you ask them why they do not know Gikuyu, they will give fake reasons, such as Gikuyu is harder than English, or Gikuyu has not got a large enough vocabulary, or that they have been brought up in Nairobi or Mombasa and so they were not taught Gikuyu. But the truth, in Gakara's view, is that they have not learned to speak Gikuyu and so they despise their language and say it is not good only because they cannot speak it well. 
He does not condemn the attitude of those Kikuyu who are not proud of their origins and language because he considers them unconscious victims of the colonialist. If they throw away their language and beliefs, they do not realize they are doing so because they have the colonialist rooster in their minds. It is the colonialist rooster which makes them prefer its language to theirs. Gakara explains that the Gikuyu speak English when it is unnecessary, when they want to show off. For this reason he defines English. The language of the colonialist, the language of slavery, the language of boasting, as opposed to Gikuyu, which is the language of tradition. According to Gakara, the Gikuyu speak English to other Gikuyu at their places of work and especially in offices, in order to give themselves airs of high-class people and to show that they are more important and educated than they really are. But also those who know very little English, Gakara writes. Start using colonial words here and there to boast and even abuse other people when they get drunk. Gakara would appear to contradict himself when he presents the problem of those Kikuyu who speak English to their spouses and children at home, that is to say where there is no reason to put on airs. He complains that the Kikuyu are lost in the bush if a husband and his wife at home call each other in English, darling, or my dear. Moreover, he warns, the practice of speaking English at home has extremely negative effects on children, who grow up ignoring, for instance, what to call their grandmothers and grandfathers, and their relatives in general, in Gikuyu. In Gakara's view the above are all examples which show how the colonialist's rooster makes the Gikuyu remain in the chains of the colonialist's language. That chain keeps them in slavery and in danger of becoming black Europeans in their very homes and with their own children. In the last section of the booklet, entitled How Can We Prevent It?, Gakara proposes the following fields of action for the protection of the Gikuyu language. Firstly, the Gikuyu who use English and English words must convince themselves that they must fight their conditioning and speak Gikuyu to other Gikuyu. Secondly, the teaching of Gikuyu must be emphasized by Gikuyu teachers. Gikuyu is taught up to standard 3, but it should be taught to standard 8 inch. Thirdly, the Gikuyu must understand that it is their work at home to prevent their children from using the colonialist words. If we do the above, then we can prevent our being colonized and we shall not be slaves of another language and we shall show our bravery in protecting our Gikuyu language from disappearance in time.